Hello everyone, Sonic Sanryaku here, and welcome to my advanced tech slash combat tips and tricks series for Neo the World Ends With You. In this particular video, we're going to be discussing party member priority and camera framing during noise encounters, delving into the ways you can exert agency over it to employ it to use tactically during combat, as well as to influence the aesthetic of your combos. First, let's talk about the concepts of lead party member and priority. The party member assigned lead is indicated by the yellow highlighted button icon hovering over their head which happens whenever a player activates a pin. When activating multiple pins, the lead party member is governed by the character whose pin was activated last in the order. For example, if I activated three different pins, the first being Neku, second being Beat, and the last being Shoka, it would be Shoka who would have the yellow glow over her button icon, signaling to the player her position as lead. So what exactly does being the leader mean in this game? This is where priority, the other concept I mentioned earlier, comes into play. The lead party member is the one who the game prioritizes the camera view around most of the time. I'll be addressing this little caveat later. If you got other pins charging the background from a far distance while priority is on another member, the camera will pan out to follow and keep the lead member within frame. The lead party member also indicates the character the player has full control over. While Neo allows you to move around characters whose pins are charging in the background, an extremely useful affordance in combat, the character with the yellow highlighted icon is the only one the player can actively run around the battlefield with when not using a pin. When deciding to activate a different party member's pin, the currently activated character will teleport over to the last location of the member who was in the lead. Party member priority also determines where aggro from enemy noise is centralized. If a grizzly leaps out from the depths of hell to attack the player, it's gonna be gunning for the character whose button icon is highlighted in yellow in almost all instances. All of these details tie into why the camera perspective follows the lead party member, which, from a game design aspect, makes sense as the game needs to have a reference point from where to aim the camera control, especially in a combat system where six characters can end up on opposite ends of the battle map at certain times during battle. So yeah, while the game is programmed to give camera priority to the party member leader, there are certain instances where that ceases to be true, and that's whenever you're using a psychokinesis or poltergeist type psych such as pig or exercise and gator respectively. These psychs seem to have the highest tier of priority over the camera. Even if its user isn't the party leader, they will still hold priority over the camera until the meter for the pin has been drained completely. If the user of the Psychokinesis or Poltergeist Psych was initially the leader, their priority will remain on the user even if the player activates a different pin, as illustrated by this clip. Character priority can only be switched after the Psychokinesis or Poltergeist pin meter has been fully depleted. I guess Psychokinesis and Poltergeist type pins were programmed to necessitate a dominance over the camera to allow them to function the way they needed to. So why did I feel the need to explain all this? That's because understanding the way Neo prioritizes the lead party member and how that affects party member positioning and camera framing can actually influence the direction and style of your combos. What exactly do I mean when I say camera framing? When playing the game, have you ever wondered why when trying to pull off a combo you've executed many times already, why the camera perspective on the combo sometimes looks different despite following the same attack order you always have, why it looks extra slick and cinematic for some reason? Let's answer that question by taking a look at these two combos. Why is it that both combos, despite following the same attack order, look different? Given what I've explained about priority and how that affects the way Neo frames the camera around a party member, I'll give you a few seconds to see if you can answer why this is. If your answer was, because the order you activated the pins were different, then you'd be correct. While both of these combos follow the same attack sequence, the order that I activate Neku and Shoka's pins are different. In this version of the combo, I activate Neku's sister subwoofer pin first before Shoka's Yuki Mitsu. Since Shoka's pin was the last to be activated, she assumes the role of lead party member and the camera makes it a priority to track her instead of Neku. This gives the first combo a more zoomed in appearance, coming off more aggressive as a result. In the second combo, after dodging behind the grizzly, I activate Shoka's Yuki Mitsu first and Neku's sister subwoofer second forcing the camera to track Neku instead. In response, the camera zooms out and Shoka becomes distant as the combo takes on a more cinematic look. In both these examples, their aesthetic is by my design, 
my agency. I'm the one who's choosing how I want these combos to look by determining which pins I activate first. By keeping these rules in mind, you can switch the perspective of your combos on the fly and truly become the director behind the camera. In this particular clip, notice how I give Shoka priority before switching it halfway to fret so that the camera zooms out in the middle of her psych attacks as opposed to the other combo I demonstrated where she was zoomed out completely. Rhythmically modulating the activation of pins with intended purpose during elaborate combos inject a visual kinetic energy into your offensive pressure, adding a dynamic flair to combos and providing an extra tinge of player expression. Being able to manipulate the camera's priority can also grant the player certain combat perks in the vein of positional advantage. Based on the timing of your activation, you can have one party member attacking a noise from the front, keeping the aggro centered on them while circling around the noise with another party member, sneaking around it to unleash the attack from a different angle. Using maneuvers like these can grant a player control over how they want to position enemy noise during combos, which just feels rewarding and looks cool. Most of the time, when you're erasing noise, you'll be pulling the camera back and forth simply by the design of the game. However, this video's purpose is to demonstrate that you can use these camera framing rules to change the way your combos look on your own volition, adding that extra stylish flair to your combos, as well as determining what position you want to attack a noise from. Now here are a few more examples demonstrating a high level understanding of this camera framing system when crafting combos. Keep in mind that I'm purposefully affecting the activation of my pins so I can get the camera perspective that I desire. In the grander design of Neo's combat system, all the details I've mentioned in this video may come off as innocuous, but I'd argue they're details that affect the subconscious layer of the game's combat, and acts as another level of expression Neo offers, which is very well appreciated. Understanding the systems behind the way the game handles pin activation, its influence on the camera and party member positioning, in conjunction with how it affects general combat, can inform the way a seasoned player views the game's design, along with their decision-making process during noise battles. And that's all I've got for today's video. Next time, we're going to talk about the quirks in Neo's input buffer system as an addendum of sorts to this video's topic, and how a player can take advantage of these quirks during combat. If you enjoyed this video or found it informative, hit the like button and subscribe in order to stay up to date on videos like these and other slices of content I've got coming up in the near future. Thanks again for the continued support. I'll see you all in the next one.